I want to help kids that have been hurt or are hurting. I want to help them get through that part of their life. Channel Kindness is our youth storytelling platform, and we've trained more than 100 youth reporters on the power of telling their stories. What's amazing is it's, it's also made by young people for young people. When we first started this organization, we didn't know exactly what it was gonna be yet, but we had a mission. We decided our mission was to build a kinder and braver world, and that we were going to do research as well as look for resources that were gonna help facilitate that dream. I heard really, really deep, beautiful, but tragic also stories from fans. It was very focused around mental health, and they were all in some way going through the same things. Channel kindness to me means assuming the humanity of other people. Using the kindness that you've built within yourself to start off with a smile, ask someone how their day is doing. We are strong, good together, then we are all apart. And kindness has a ripple effect, so. I hope young people really ingest the words in this book and know that you will be okay and that you are strong enough to get through all of your battles. Thank you for sharing your stories with us so that we can help change things. Hello. Oh my and god. Welcome. <laughs> I'm so We're excited. here. I am Maya Smith. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I have the incredible honor of serving as the executive director of Born This Way Foundation. I could not be more excited to be here tonight. And I want to first start by saying a thank you to Fiwell Friends for helping to bring these stories to life. We are so grateful for your partnership and support. Here at Born This Way Foundation, we are committed to supporting young people's mental health and working with them to build a kinder and a braver world. We do that in service to three main goals set out by our incredible co-founders, Lady Gaga and Cynthia Germanata. We work to make kindness cool, we work to validate the emotions of young people around the world, and we work to eliminate the stigma that surrounds mental health. I know that for so many, myself included, shout out to my children, distance learning downstairs, this year has been filled with so many challenges, but I'm confident as we continue to follow the leadership of young people around the world, we will continue to create a kinder and a braver world, one in which we will not only survive, but thrive. Just yesterday, we wrapped our Be Kind 21 campaign, though the mission is year round, and we generated over 112 million pledged act of kindness, and I couldn't be prouder of that campaign. Today, we're coming together with all of you from around the world to celebrate the launch of our first book, Four Years in the Making, Channel Kindness, Stories of Kindness and Community. This book is a testament to the resilience and bravery of young people, and our team is always inspired by this generation of young people who are hopeful, engaged, driven by purpose, and collaborative. Before we dive into tonight's conversation with Channel Kindness authors Hannah, Terius, and Jessica, and our co-founders and my friends and heroes, Cynthia and Lady Gaga, I'd love to invite the heart and soul of Channel Kindness, Alex Aid and Aisha Mahmood, to join us in congratulating these young authors. Aisha? Thank you so much, Maya. As Maya said, I am the editor of our Channel Kindness program. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I have had the incredible honor and immense pleasure to work with the young people featured in our Channel Kindness book. This experience has only reaffirmed what I've always known about young people, that their voices are powerful, that they're very passionate about helping others, and that kindness can make all the difference in the world, especially right now. I hope that listening to Lady Gaga, her mom, Cynthia, and having these conversations with Jessica, Terius, and Hannah, that you feel inspired to spread kindness to yourself, others, and your community, and that you feel empowered to share your story with us at channelkindness.org. Because your voice is important, your story matters, and we could all do with a little bit more kindness. Now, I've had the honor of working with Channel Kindness and all the young people involved in it for two years now, but the program's growth and this book wouldn't really even be possible 
without Alex Aid, Born This Way Foundation's Director of Programming. Alex? Thank you, Aisha. Hi, everyone. My name is Alex Aid. My pronouns are he, him, his. And I'm the Director of Programs at Born This Way Foundation. As part of my role, one of the first programs I've had the honor to help build over the years, the Channel Kindness. Channel Kindness is a program and a digital platform that, through the power of storytelling, inspires our audience to spread kindness, encourage acceptance, and elevate the stories of good that happen in our communities every day. To all the young people we've worked with over the years who have helped build Channel Kindness, some of whom you'll hear from tonight, I wanna to say a wholehearted thank you. Your stories have brought hope to countless people around the world. Hope, much needed hope that problems can be solved, that challenges can be overcome, that we have everything we need right now to do something at this very moment to build that kinder, braver world. I'm reminded of a quote by Kira Horn from her story, Learning to Heal a Broken Heart, that's featured in the book. Despite all the adversity she's faced throughout her life, she writes, the miracle is that I really do have a healthy and loving heart. I have what it takes to overcome the bad days, and I've got a million reasons to know I can. To Kira and to all of you out there watching tonight, make that a million and one reasons, because at Born This Way Foundation, we believe that too. We're glad you're here tonight not just with us online here, but we're glad you're in our world too. These are such challenging times, but I hope Channel Kindness is always a reminder to you that you matter. That each act of kindness you do, no matter how big or small, matters. And that when you're ready to share your own story with the world to inspire others, the platform is always here for you to do so. And join the kindest story ever told at channelkindness.org. Thank you all so much. Now back to my friend and my boss, Maya Smith. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Thank you. If those voices sound familiar, it's because they're two of the incredible um, audible readers. So we, Aisha and Alex brought these stories to life. So if you want to hear more of their voices, check it out. And thank you both so incredibly much for those re remarks. You are such bright lights on our team and on this earth. And I am so incredibly proud to know both of you. So every time the foundation goes live, every time I post anything on Instagram, the first question people ask me is where is Lady Gaga? And now I am so excited to produce Lady Gaga, but more importantly, to introduce you to Born This Way Foundation co-founders, the heartbeat of our work, the true tone setters for the kindness and community that we build every day here at Born This Way Foundation, two women who I deeply admire and learn from every day, my friends, Cynthia Germanata and Lady Gaga. Hi guys. Hello ladies. Hi. So hey, nice we're to just so see happy you. to be here. <laughs> so Maya, happy we love to be you here so too. Much. We love and you so love much, you. Aisha, Alex. Thank you everyone that's on today. I'm, I'm just, I'm so honored to be here and you guys are just a wonderful team and these authors, you are all best-selling authors now and I just can't wait for everyone to hear your stories. We are truly, no offense, saving the best for last, but we're gonna talk to you for a minute and then introduce you to these incredible authors. So I just have a couple of questions for both of you. So LG, I wanna start with you first and, and ask you, each story in Channel Kindness is a reflection of the community of change makers that the foundation works with every day, including your own. What was the experience like for you of curating and collecting stories for Channel Kindness? You know, honestly, Maya, I really think that it was my relationship with Emma, who is one of our authors. Uh, it, it was my relationship with her that really inspired what Channel Kindness is all about, which is a place for people to share their stories. And our team at Born This Way Foundation has built beautiful connections with people from all over the country and all over the world to cultivate these beautiful, colorful, courageous stories that are so brave in their ability to be kind and the way we share ourselves. And uh, I'm just 
I, I can't say it, 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 could, it couldn't be more of a joyful experience for me. And while these stories are in many ways heartbreaking, they're really very hopeful. And I hope that we all can role model for each other today, uh, a, a day filled with kindness, a day where we're all channeling our goodness and sending that to each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Cynthia, you recently talked about being on a mom high after getting to reunite with both of your daughters. Parent to parent, as you see my artwork behind me, what was it like to shepherd this project with your daughter? Thank you, Maya. Yes, I was recently reunited with my daughters and I'm going to be floating on a cloud for a while now. Um, I think that any time as parents uh, or adults that we can connect with our children and young people in general, it's important and it's an opportunity to learn. My daughter and I have always believed in lifting up the voice of young people from the very beginning of the foundation. And I believe that through that process, we have learned the power of storytelling. I am so proud of my daughter for sharing her story in the very beginning. And I believe it resonated with young people around the world and gave them the courage and the confidence to also share their story. Um, my, mine and my daughter's hope is that this book will inspire others to also share their story. And we're just so excited to share it with you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing your daughters with the world and for modeling bravery and vulnerability and kindness. It means so many, you, so much to so many people you'll never even know. So uh, Gaga, I'd love to ask, why was it important for you to share your story alongside our other authors? Well, I really believe in the power of the global kind community. And I believe that everyone's story matters and that we should listen to each other and communicate I feel very strongly that it really wouldn't be uh, really very good role modeling of me to encourage people to share their stories and not share my own. So I did tell a story in this book uh, that is my truth of part of my life in growing up and my relationship with what I call the negative space. I believe that always the negative space, whether it's filled with hateful words or filled with silence, it can always be filled with kindness and that's what my story is about. But I would love to just say that, you know, I don't think it's about comparing each other's stories. I don't think one story is more important than another. I think that they're all equally valuable. And the point of the book and the channel kindness movement in and of itself for us has always been that young people's stories matter. Young people's stories move kindness around the world. And I'm so very proud of everyone that's here today to talk with uh, everyone who's watching about kindness and about their journeys and the stories that have made them who they are. Thank you so much Thanks. for sharing that. And just you sharing your story makes such a difference in making it okay for others to share theirs. Thank you. Um, so I want to now leave it to the voices who truly created the, this book. I'm excited to pass the mic to Lady Gaga to lead a conversation with Cynthia, with Jessica, with Terius, with Hannah, as you all share your experiences that inspired our channel kindness stories. If you'll allow me to, I'll hang out just because I can't get enough of these young people, but I do want to turn it over to you, LG, and just invite you to ask the many questions you have for these incredible young people. Hi everyone, how are you? Are you excited to be best-selling authors today? <laughs> Beyond yeah, excited. Incredibly honest. excited. Well, so Jessica, please wave so everyone knows who you are. Terius, Hannah, I just want to celebrate you fully today. You are three remarkable human beings who are so brave, so courageous, so kind. Um, I'm a little bit overwhelmed with emotion by your gifts to us, the way that you've shared yourselves with us, shared yourselves with the world. You are role modeling so much strength today for people to share who they are, to share their struggles, to share the culture of what their stories have done to shape their lives. And I wanted to start 
by saying thank you, Jessica, Terry, and, and Hannah. But I would want to start with you, Jessica. Um, I'd like to, if it's okay, introduce you to everyone. Everyone here is authors, but at Channel Kindness, we also call you reporters, like a you know news station. So I'm going to play reporter for a second, and I'm going to intro you. Uh, so what we all know now, reading your story, is that after a classmate died by suicide, you understood the true need for suicide prevention and encouraged your peers to take care of their mental health. So you decided to start a yoga nonprofit with your sister. I'm very close with my sister, so I think that this is wonderful. Yoga for Youths, where before the pandemic, you held classes in schools and community centers to teach kids, to teach adults, families, free yoga and meditation skills. So I want to know from you, this, is, this month is Suicide Prevention Month. So you started this nonprofit, but tell us why you felt the need to do so, and why is mental health awareness so important to you in your life? Why, why was this story important for you to tell? Thank you, Lady Gaga, for that Thank question. You, so it started as a way to help me personally with my own mental health after my friend's suicide. And after I told other people about this, it just became natural to share the benefits of yoga and mindfulness by hosting these events in my community. And though COVID, like you said, has prevented the possibility of hosting these in person, I think it's still so important to stay connected with others. And this dialogue about our mental health is so important, and I'm glad it's gaining more traction in mainstream culture, and that we are, as a society, working towards a more hopeful future and actively trying to end the stigma around mental health. What ways are you now practicing your meditation and your yoga skills to keep yourself centered at home? Exactly, yes, every day. Some deep breaths and some pranayama goes a long way. Do you want to teach anyone some pranayama breathing right now? Yeah. So you can take a deep breath in, and then this is what we do to exhale the negative energy out. You take and then you can feel your abdomen engaging and your mm -hmm. breath taking out. That's a really simple contracting. way of contracting, exactly. Jessica, okay, can let's you do it all together. Yeah. Ready? Look, come on. I think it'll be fun. Why not? Right? One, two, three. Thank you so much, Jessica. Maya? Jessica, I would love to know. I mean, I, I too, like so many other people in the world, far too many people in the world have been touched by suicide. And I'd love to know what it was about what it was about you, the environment, the support you got that allowed you to think immediately about how to support others, right? What we see from young people today, especially at the foundation, is that young people are solving problems and healing not only themselves, but finding ways to heal the world. So how did you find that strength to not only take care of yourself and all of the grief and trauma that you are going through, but also of so many people through the amazing work that you do and your ability to share your story I actually had no idea that I wanted to start a yoga nonprofit in the first place it started as a way for me and my sister to bond uh, through yoga and because I was teaching other kids how to do these just weird poses and like breathing exercises that aren't a part of our normal daily routines it evolved into something even greater and because of that a lot of people have come to help me. I reached out to a lot of people, explain where I was coming from, and a lot of adults were willing to help me. And then I also had help from my mom, obviously, who's been a great inspiration, just like Cynthia has to Lady Gaga, to just support me throughout the entire way. Jessica, do you it's find that having, a, that having a daily practice or a daily skill helps you with your mental health? Yes, I do, because the journey to helping your mental health is 
a, a journey as it is because you have to work on it every day. It's not immediately like you tell yourself, uh, take a vacation, charge up, and then immediately you're recharged. It's a slow process that you have to build on, work inch by inch towards to a goal that you have. Maybe it's finding the time in your day to write in a journal or take some time to meditate with some calm music. So you're just not caught up with the world and its busyness. It sounds like you're doing some skills-based behavior work. That's pretty powerful stuff. I love it so much. I'm super proud of you for sharing your story. You're so brave. Um, I wanted to just tell everyone that's watching that that you're you're 19 years old and this is just remarkable at, at your age that you've done this and you're currently a marketing major in college and you hope to continue making a social impact in the new community of Philadelphia, attend law school in the future and continue traveling the world, trying new things every day. It sounds like you're really into that global worldly perspective and in your free time, you like to look at art history and architecture. So do I. So you can always ask Jessica for a book or a food recommendation. Thank you, Jessica. We're so happy to have you here. And now I want to talk. Well, first, let's have a, a round of applause for Jessica, just because she should. Thank you, everyone. You're so wonderful. And I want to talk now to Terius. Um, Terius, you are you are just, you have a remarkable story that is very, very empowering and, and really speaks to me on, on many different levels. Um, Terius, you went to school in Mississippi. You wrote about how the town that you uh, live in, that's a small rural town or that you lived in growing up, worked to have the town's first ever pride parade. You made this happen. And uh, you discussed that big moment of acceptance for your hometown and how we should all celebrate love and show kindness towards the LGBTQ plus community. And I have to say, this story truly touches my heart. As I, I know you know how I feel about this. I know you know, since the beginning of my career, the LGBTQ plus community has been so important to me. And even before then, because they were my friends, like they, this, these, these are my people. And I'm, I'm so inspired by your story. I'm so inspired that you made this happen. Could you please uh, share with us, um, you mentioned your story was about the first Pride Parade ever in your town in Starkville and how they rallied for the LGBTQ plus community. In what ways can we show allyship to marginalized communities? Thank you so much, Lady Gaga, for that question. I think it's a very important question. And also thank you for being a positive role model for all LGBTQ youth. You were a very positive role model for me growing up in that shows a lot in your work and your allyship that you have as well. And I think that's important, allyship. Allyship is nothing more than showing basic fundamentals of love with one another and giving them the same respect and rights as those in a place of privilege practice every single day. So it is important to show allyship in order to support a platform that would otherwise go unnoticed. And the case of Starfield Pride, uh, a place where discrimination could have easily stopped a major success, the organizer Bailey McDaniel was welcomed and supported greatly by a large and greater community who not only show that like the city of Starkville, that they were in full support of allowing pride to happen, but even to the point that it became the largest parade in Starkville's history. This is a historical moment that truly embodies the importance of allyship within itself, um, as without the support and without the LGBTQ community would have been met with opposition instead of love. And this story would have drastically been different and further displaced an already marginalized community. Allyship is supporting someone or a group of people when no one else will, valuing someone for who they are, even when you cannot relate personally, and fighting with love and persistence to ensure that those two things are met. We will all be an ally at some, be an ally for someone at least once in our life, but the difference between being a good and great one all lies within your willingness to listen, learn, and act when needed. Terius, that is just such a beautiful message. and and. You know, in talking about allyship, how do you feel also that you have developed for yourself and the, what, watching people around you develop their sense of allyship, how do you feel that humility plays a part in that journey? I think it plays a huge part because in a lot of ways, we believe that we should be at the center of all of our stories. 
we believe that if we cannot relate to something, or if it doesn't directly relate to us, that it does not matter. But the truth is that even if you cannot relate to it, even if you have no personal attachment to it, recognizing something and recognizing when you need to be there to show up for someone who is different than you, who values things that are different than you, and who finds passion in something that you could never imagine even interacting with, that is the importance of humility itself. Being humble enough to set aside your own personal beliefs, your own personal values, and your own ideologies around the world to support and be there for someone else who needs you. And because you have that space and you have that possibility and place to do that and make that change. And humility is really big. And that. That, that passion, that, com that compassion, that empathy, that humility, where did you develop that? Was that something that was part of your home life growing up? And that, was that part of what made you who you are? Or was it, was it watching the discrimination in your town that made you feel this way? Was it, was it something that you experienced just on a whole or was it, was it something that was instilled in you when you were young? I definitely give all of my, I definitely think that it's a little bit of both, but I also believe that my parents raised me in order to be compassionate and understanding of others. They raised me to be someone to not judge, to accept everyone for who they are and to love myself completely. And by loving myself completely, I can learn to love others. And so I think that my parents did a huge role in that. They allowed me to be who I am. And because of that, I am able to allow all those I interact to be who they are in their fullest and accept them and love them for who they are completely. Well, thank you so much for sharing that and, and giving so much of your heart and your soul and, and who you are to all of us today. Um, I want to just tell everyone that's watching again that Terius, you are a 2019 TFA Hawaii core member and a master's candidate for legal studies for indigenous people's law at the University of Oklahoma. Wow. Having received this undergraduate degree from the University of Mississippi, you spent the majority of your adult life in Oxford, Mississippi, where you've written many stories for a variety of publications surrounding indigenous people environmental advancements rights, and LGBTQIA plus rights. So you're no stranger to being an author. Your intention in life is to make a change that is everlasting and impactful. It sounds like you wanna make history and consequently every day you live a life where you receive knowledge with an open mind. You say you feel each experience with an open heart and place your feet firmly on the ground to remember the land and community that you're connected to and working with. You are a wonderful person. Thank you for being a part of our book and channeling so much kindness with us. And another round of applause for another amazing author. You're a best-selling author we, today. LG, before we turn to Hannah, I just want to ask Terius one quick question and remind people, if you haven't cracked open your book yet, each chapter and each story, LG, you took the time to respond to and share your feedback in. And also each chapter has resources. So for some people, yeah, Cynthia, thank you for these beautiful pullout quotes that you're showing us. And LG, mm -hmm. thank you for taking the time to write them. Terris, I know that allyship uh, is, is the intention we all have. But for someone who's learning how to be a better ally, do you have any resources that you just want to point to to say, start your study here tonight and go to this place? Considering that I believe that in order to learn to best understand one another is through human interaction and communication and contact, I believe that you should find someone who is different than you, find someone who identifies as queer or someone, a member of the LGBTQI community and ask them, in a polite and respectful way. Get to know them as a person. Ask the questions once you build that relationship and try to bond and understand how to be that ally. I think that there are a lot of resources um, out there that are, really, that are really good and really nice to read about, but it's actually that interaction that you have with another person that will truly build your understanding of allyship and also in inspire you and motivate you within yourself to want to be an ally. Because it's really easy to be an ally when you have a face of someone that you know or love when you're fighting for a cause. Because you know that that's the person that you are fighting for and that's the person you want to make the change for. And subsequently, it makes a change for so many more. And that's the beautiful part about allyship. Thank it you. is beautiful. I feel like it's a really beautiful journey and you're, you're super missing out if you don't allow those people in your life to 
uh, to teach you all the things uh, that you need to learn and unlearn about life and, and build connections. So I really appreciate you so much. And I'm excited so much to now move to Hannah. Hannah, we're so excited to have you here today. And I want to tell everyone a little bit about your story. Uh, she's on page um, 170 also, by the way, as well as pages 16 plus 32. And Hannah has three stories in this book. The stories that she will be touching on in this conversation are about Special Olympics and Inclusion Revolution and Score a Friend, which are initiatives, Hannah, that are incredible, that were founded by a young woman named Sarah who wanted to create a club in which anyone with a disability could have a friend. Hannah, your story focuses on inclusion as a theme and how disability does not mean inability. And what I want to know is your is your stories touch on how we can build friendships and connections with others who may be different from ourselves. Simu similarly to what Terius was just saying, um, how can we practice inclusion in our everyday lives? This question captures my life's passion and purpose. I think we need to choose to include people who are different from ourselves, a part of our lives. This means accepting and valuing others for who they are. It means really listening to people, discovering their gifts, and celebrating their humanity. One of my stories in the book is about Sarah, who started School of Friend. Our friendship developed through spending time together like having coffee, going to the movies and restaurants, volunteering together, baking cookies, and talking. And I mean lots of talking. That's, I, well, I think building those beautiful friendships, I think that that's the stuff that makes us who we are. It's that these stories shape our lives. We appreciate your story so, so much, Hannah. And I want to share so much more about who you are with everyone and, and tell them that you are one of 10 chosen from around the world to serve as a servant, a Sergeant Shriver International Global Messenger representing Special Olympic athletes as you live out this prestigious four year commitment through your writing and public speaking. You've become one of the most courageous voices changing the definition of what is possible in a world that treats individuals with cognitive disabilities with kindness and respect. You received a Heartland Broadcast Emmy in 2017 for your work on Denver 7 television, so you were already a reporter before. And that television segment was called More Alike Than Different, and I really love that name. Uh, also, Hannah constantly is drawing inspiration from her training as a channel kindness reporter, and we appreciate that. And by reporter, we mean author. As a Special Olympics athlete, Hannah competes in cycling and skiing, and through her business called Wholeheartedly, she's inspiring joy, acceptance, and empowerment, and you certainly have today. Thank you so much. And Hannah, I just want to know one thing, like, one memory with your friend Sarah that sticks out for you the most? Well, she was a high school friend of mine. And when I first met her, it was a dream come true. I didn't know when I was growing up that I'll meet her. And she has a twin brother, actually, who has autism spectrum disorder. And I thought is to myself is that how can I connect with this person? Would you like me? Because I have an intellectual disability myself. Wasn't sure. So I thought that we got talking and we decided that we both did the yak together along with her twin brother, Jacob, um, who is her twin brother. Uh, and then, which is pretty cool, um, they finally accepted me for who I was. And Story short is that we were on the YAC committee for the Special Olympics of Colorado and that we just connected through swimming. That was the sport that we did. She was a diver. 
I was on the junior varsity swim team, and it was just a lot of fun. And uh, with her, life was simple. With her, everything was honest. And that's what friendships is all about: is honesty, truth, and wisdom. And I feel that every day for the rest of my entire life. Yeah, that's you, so cool. So, thanks. Sorry. Hannah, you said something very powerful in your story that Sarah was able to take the anger that she felt about things that happened to her brother and turn it into this wonderful passion. Can you talk about how that can be life changing, not only for Sarah, but for those around her? Well, it kind of really developed with, um, you know, Sarah and how she wanted to um, do something positive. And Owen Sarah, who is my best friend, she has a tremendous kind heart, and I'm thrilled and honored that she's one of my best friends. She views um, life to be the biggest passion, and she has the biggest drive that I ever known. And I'm very thankful that I wrote about her and that she is just a transcend of a young idealist person, which that helped her brother grow for who he is because, well, they realized that there are many things in life that you just can't um, see every day. And I just hope that a lot of people can see that and realize that all people matter, including me, including Cynthia, including Lady Gaga, and I mean that wholeheartedly. Thank you so much, Hannah. We appreciate you, we love you, we appreciate your story. And I I wanted to ask one more question of everyone that is on today. You know, you guys are authors, you're, you're storytellers, but they're your true stories. I really want to applaud your, well, sorry, round of applause for Hannah, we forgot, let's go. I was, I was so, interested in what you were saying that I couldn't wait to say what I'm about to say, which is that you're so raw and authentic and real. And that raw authenticity that comes through you is exactly what changes the world. And what's, it's what inspires me to do what I do. I feel the same way about Terrius. I feel the same way about Jessica. Your stories are, they're brave in their ability to be authentic. I think authenticity is, is something that we don't talk about enough. And I think in order to be truly kind, you must be authentic in that kindness. You must be authentic in your relationships. That's what I believe. And I want to uh, ask one more question of all of you before uh, we keep going. And that is, um, I'll start with Terius and then, then Hannah and then Jessica, if that's okay. Terius, if you could pick one thing that you would want people to take away from your story, a call to action. This is for all, all three of you. One thing from your story, I'm sure there's many, and to be honest, I take many things away from all your stories, but if there was one thing that you could leave with everyone, like an artifact, you know, something special and sentimental, a, a message for them to carry in their relationships, uh, to, to teach them, to uh, inspire them, what would that be? The, the main thing that I hope that readers in my story um, is the power of voice platform. This is a moment in history that many may have viewed as minuscule, but it's these small town stories with these small town initiatives that impact the lives of those who never thought anything like Pride in Mississippi would ever be possible, which truly change communities and inspire progress in the world around us. The love that was shown in Starkville, Mississippi on this historical day is one that the rest of the world can look on and reference to when faced with a similar decision. Whether that be simply hosting a pride parade, advocating for the rights for all, and approaching the world from the place, changing the world on a day, or approaching the world, trying to change the world on a daily basis. That is a form of play, of that, <laughs> sorry. This, and that is from a place of compassion and understanding that we must value each other for our differences and never let our personal beliefs interfere with what we know is right. 
loving each other, supporting each other, and lifting each other up when no one else will is the lesson that I would like to, everyone to learn from my story. And that all equates to simply sharing kindness. Kindness is the root of it all. Its power is limitless. So share that kindness without fear and watch the outcome. Watch how the world changes around you. And I promise you, you will be happier because of it. Hannah, what about you? What is your what what is your call to action? What is the one thing from your story that you would really want people to remember? Being inclusive is a form of kindness. Everyone can practice kindness and inclusion. You just need an open heart. The hills in my stories are people who are able to see the world through someone else's eyes because the hearts were open. That's wonderful, Hannah. Thank you so much. Uh, I love the themes here. Jessica, take us home with your story. What's, what's that one thing, you know, if you could put it, put it in cement somewhere and, and put your heart in there, what would you want people to remember? To put it succinctly, my mantra is just to have self-care and i think from reading my story you'll realize that self-care is a part of taking care of yourself and also the people around you so take each day each moment at its best and that's at its worst but take it one breath at a time i think that's so beautiful you all have beautiful different perspectives i love that i think it's important i love that we were able to have this conversation that you have such clear visions on who you are, and yet you're still so obviously developing your relationship with the world, your relationship with your community, your relationship with people around you. You've done tremendous work. I am so excited. And um, how are we doing, Maya? I mean, I we're online. I'm sure we're getting a ton of questions, and like I, I love to hear some of those questions what's going on on the internet i want to know because we have three superstars on here with us and i'm very excited well as per usual you're breaking the internet as you do and yeah, truly with kindness. <laughs> ah! with kindness the best reason to break the internet thank you to everybody who submitted questions before i start q a um, Cynthia, I just wanted to see if you had anything you wanted to add as we wrap up this conversation and turn to the incredible questions we've been getting. Um, I just, not only do I want to thank these authors, but I want to let our audience know that you are only hearing three of 51 incredible stories in this book. So we're very excited for you to read it. And we're also hoping that we will inspire um, others to share their stories in the future. Take it away, Maya. Thank you, Cynthia. That's exactly right. And so as we do for all of our foundation events, we want this to be an interactive event. We've collected some questions from the audience and we're excited to answer a few here. If we don't get to your question, please connect with us on social media at Channel Kindness or at BTW Foundation. We want this conversation to keep going. Kindness is urgent. It's important, not just now, but always. So thank you to the authors. Um, and I'll start first, Terry, so we have a question for you from Nicole. She shares that she's a first grade teacher. What is your best advice for teaching kids self-empowerment and how to stand up to bullies? Oh, that's such a powerful question. I'm also a teacher, so I think that's really awesome that Nicole's a teacher. Um, the best way to do that and to stand up to bullies and to be yourself really is to remind yourself that you are loved. Remind yourself that no matter what others say, no matter how others make you feel, that you are who you are for a reason. Each and every last person on this earth is made uniquely different for a reason. Cherish that, value that. Understand that that is where your power comes from, within your uniqueness, within your differences. And use that and teach your students that in order to help them not only build their self-confidence, but when they are approached by bullies, when they're approached by people who discredit who they are, they are able to say, I am sorry that you feel that way, but I know my worth and I know who I am and I'm happy with who I am. And that is how you build your own self-worth and stand up to anyone in the world. Because when you are true to yourself, when you love yourself, 
And when you recognize the power within yourself, no one else can take that from you. Thank you, Terius. You are totally right. And I hope Hunter and Logan are listening downstairs to your very <laughs> wise are, advice. They've got, they've got <laughs> a glass by the wall. <laughs> um, so I want to ask this next one. Friendship is actually, and I want to ask Jessica and Hannah to answer both. Um, it's Drew's question. And we talk a lot at the foundation about friendship, friendship being the sustenance by which we get through our days, friendship as being um, what connects us on the foundation team. It's, you know, Lady Gaga talks about she runs her team and everything she does as a family, right? And that you feel that in every conversation. And I hope everyone here feels part of her family. And I know my best friends are watching today too, but let's talk about friendship. Um, let's go Hannah first and then we'll do Jessica. Drew asks, what are some tips that you have for being there for your friends during their struggles, but also making sure that while you're there for your friends, you're taking care of your mental health? Well, really wonderful, uh, great question to start with. And I would say for the first tip is definitely listen, care for one another, show compassion, Kindness is every day, even if you have a choice to make. And as I said before, choose to be kind. Choose to be kind to others. Because as soon as you show kindness, you can show more than life. And life means absolutely everything. And you can share life with your friends. Thank you, Hannah. That's absolutely right. Jessica. I would say in order to be there for your friends, just listen to them with all their struggles. It's hard to share secrets and to basically explain your story when you're just starting to get to know people, but people want to know, get to know you. And so I think that the best way is just to stay compassionate, stay empathetic and listen to the whole story. There might be parts that you might not know completely and just stay cognizant and honest with yourself the entire process. That's absolutely true. Thank you. And Cynthia always uses this phrase about listening non-judgmentally. And that's so hard because sometimes you just know what you want to say as someone's talking to you, right? And swallowing that in and listening, I think is so important. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, the it is so important. Little... Oh, you know, Go ahead. My, I just want to add, because you you asked such a, you know, whoever, that question is so important. You know, I, I'm also interested to know from a, any one of you, you know, do you think it's important? I think about this when I'm, when I'm talking to my friends or I'm, I'm trying to be a, a good ally to anyone in my life that I love so much. Like, I think it's important also that we acknowledge that we can be wrong, that we, that we, don't always get it right in the way that we communicate with people. And I was, I was just wondering if anybody had any thoughts on, on experiencing that. Cause for me, that, that was a real, you know, a, a real transformation for me in my life when I, I learned that it was okay to be wrong, to not get it right the first time, but to be willing to try. Does, does that resonate with anybody? It definitely was. You're with shaking me. your head. Okay. Go ahead, Hannah. No, it definitely resonates with me because friendships is the core of your life. Without friendships, you don't know where you're going to be in life because they can also help you succeed. And with friendships and growth and development and patience it goes a long way, no matter what. And don't forget, all of us, and I mean absolutely every one of us, can make mistakes. But the most important lesson of all, if you make mistakes, forgive yourself and forgive others because that is highly important. I highly recommend it. Terius, you were shaking your head. Did you want to add anything? Um, I was just going to say that that really resonated with me. Uh, so I'm from a military family, so I moved around a lot. And so with that, I wasn't able to build I didn't have an idea of what sustainable friendships were. And so I was never really held accountable by my friends because either the next year or two years later, I would be moving. So I couldn't, I didn't have to worry about how people felt or what I did to others. And even though I think I was, I'm an empathetic person in general, sometimes 
we make selfish decisions or decisions that are only that are not keeping others in mind. Um, and so when I got to college, my really good friend Ruben actually held me accountable for the very first time. And he expressed to me that you should not approach other people in this way. Um, and you should not think of yourself and only think that, hey, this is just because you don't have this background of having friends for a long time, that you can still do whatever you want and say whatever you want to other people. Uh, Ruben really pushed me to understand friendship, the value of friendship, and more so importantly, to understand the value of accountability. And now because of that, me and Ruben have a very open and honest relationship where we can hold each other accountable. And because of that, I am able to grow within myself and understand when I'm wrong, not only in friendships, but in life in general, and take that understanding and do reflection and then grow from that. And so I think it's really important to be able to understand That accountability is real, right? Like if you don't hold each other accountable, I don't know if it's a real friendship. And I I think that that it it can be really super productive to be able to move past that point where you, like for me, like when I've made a mistake and someone's been like, hey, you did this thing that really hurt me. And I've gone, whoa, I didn't even, I didn't even notice that. I didn't even realize I did that. And then saying, saying, I'm sorry, validating how I feel and then listening and learning and uh, to me, this is so important. And, and I, uh, Jessica, I don't know if you have anything to say about this as well. I just think it's a really important yeah. point. Yeah. yeah, and along the same lines, I think that we all think we're getting more connected because of social media. It helps us like keep in touch with people that we don't know um, that, or that we haven't talked to in a long time. But given that screen in between us, it's really easy for miscommunication to happen and for us to be... Um, tricked into a falsified sense of security with our friends, with our connections, just because we're friends or we look at their posts, things like that. And that's not really the case. You really have to devote time and energy into your friendships. You do. Absolutely. I love that we're normalizing apologies and failures because Hannah, you're absolutely right. We all make mistakes. I've become famous around the Smith household for um, writing apology letters to my seven-year-old when I snap at him (laughs) or forget to have my coffee. So it's so important. It's so, so important. Um, Cynthia, I want to ask you a question from Raina. Um, Raina shares, I'm finding a new path in my career through kindness to be a teacher. I'm also a photographer, which keeps me creative, but I want to share kindness through my jobs. How can I become a channel kindness reporter on channelkindness.org? Well, that is very exciting, Raina. Um, thank you for your interest. Um, I'd love to connect you with Aisha. Uh, we also have Channel Kindness 101, which is an introduction uh, to becoming an author and to being part of the platform. And we welcome you and we'll just make that connection for you. Awesome. Thank you, Cynthia. And nobody has anywhere to go, right? Because we have a lot of incredible questions coming in, all of which I think I want to hear your answers to. Um, So I'm going to ask Cynthia this, and then LG, I would love for you to answer it too. And then for the authors, if you have anything to weigh in on from your own guardian parent relationships, would love for that to happen. So Andy P asks, What tips would you give to someone who wants to explain to their parents that they feel like they're mentally struggling and need help? How would you open a conversation about mental health? And before, Cynthia, I let you answer, I just want to flag, I know we're talking about channel kindness, but at the foundation and in the world, kindness and mental health are inextricably linked. We're living in a time in our world where far too many people are struggling, far too many people feel like they're alone. Some of you may know that the CDC released a study that said that of 18 to 24 year olds, more than 25.4% of them seriously considered taking their life in June. So this, this, this question is one that far too many people are facing and we need to be better as we are trying to be at the foundation at providing resources and support and connection and making sure that nobody feels alone and that everyone as lg said feels loved so i'd love cynthia for you to give some thoughts on on what do we tell someone who's struggling and how they how they can start that conversation it's a great question and there's are is still a lot of stigma 
around mental health and around having those difficult conversations. And modeling healthy ones is the best way to begin. Um, we conduct a lot of research at Born This Way Foundation, uh, and we know from our research that some of the reasons that young people don't talk about it, especially to their parents, they don't talk about their mental health, is A, their parents also don't share their own struggles. I know that I made mistakes. Um, you know, we as parents think we have to be really tough and strong and keep ourselves together all the time, but I didn't share my struggles with my children. Uh, so, so and, and I think that precludes a lot of, of young people from sharing with their parents. Um, our research also has showed us that a lot of young people feel judged when they're talking to adults. So I've learned from my daughter, both of my daughters, that listening, but also understanding and validating their emotions without judgment is very, very important. So I think, you know, to, so to answer the question, I think sitting down and starting to model a healthy conversation, listening, understanding without judgment, and just acknowledging that you also have had your own struggles is a good beginning. And Gaga, I wanna give you a, some space to say anything you'd like to add. Well, I'd like to say first, mom, you know, the fact that you admit to having made mistakes is so cool. And it makes me feel so loved that you've taken this on in your life as part of your path towards our healing as a family and towards helping me with my passion in my life to help the heal, heal, help heal the lives of others. But I wish to say, you know, with everybody on the call, I think that it's actually interesting to subvert that question a little bit, Maya, and say that, you know, sometimes, sometimes we, we tell our parents, sometimes we can sit our parents down and say, hey, this is really important. Sometimes we feel afraid and maybe little bites of bravery every day, a little more of the story every day to, to, to your parents is helpful. But I got to say, some people can't tell their parents. And I just, I feel the need to say this because it's, it's, it's real and it's true. And some people don't have parents that can hear what you're saying, that you, they don't have parents that are willing to listen. Some people don't have parents at all. So I encourage young people to build families in their local community. And I encourage them to celebrate their stories by sharing it with each other and creating a community, creating a culture around you where you can say, hey, this is what I'm going through. What have you been through? And that parent, you know, that role model, that's why I talked about role modeling in the beginning, is that role modeling can actually happen between us. I don't believe that it's only our parents that role model for us. I believe it's also our friends. It could be somebody that's younger than you in your life that says, hey, I see you and I'm learning from you and uh, or you you can learn from me and this is what I believe. What do you believe? What have you been through? This is what I've been through. So just to set the stage for reality a little bit in that question, because while I think, you know, taking little bites of bravery to, to, to tell our parents is one way, it, there's also just the, the truth, which is that not everybody has parents that can hear it. Not everybody has parents that are compassionate. Some people, they come out to their parents or uh, they um, talk about their mental struggles and their parents kick them out or they tell them that they're that they're um you know they're asking for things that they can't provide and i just i wish to provide for people the framework for what this book is all about these are young people coming together as a family as a global community and saying we can be kind we can be kind together and we can tell our stories and whether my mom and dad are listening or my mom and mom or my dad and my dad or or they and they are listening right that that even if you're homeless right but you have a story to tell that story matters and that the community that you can find they will lift you up and and i will continue to speak about one small act of kindness at a time that's why this book matters so much to me that's why this foundation matters so much to me it's, it's the global kind community and it's the it's the it's the fearlessness in every one of these people on the call today that are willing to talk. This is this is an act not just of 
of love to the world, but this is an act of love to yourself. And, and you can be your own family and you can create your own family. Thank you so much for bringing that up because we also know from a lot of our research that peer support is very important, that a young person would rather turn to a peer than an adult when they're in a time of crisis, but their peer isn't always equipped to help them. So one of the other things that we offer that you can find on our website is various types of training for peers to learn the right language, the right questions to ask, and get somebody connected to an adult that can provide some help. Thank you, Cynthia, and and thank you for your vulnerability and for sharing. Um, I want to move on. To I the also want to say, I just, Maya, I, I know please. I'm talking a lot about this, but I feel like it's it's really important. Listen, I also encourage, you know, whether you're asking yourself this question or you're asking the person in your life this question. Maybe it's your family member, maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a friend. I I like using this question. How are you feeling? And socializing this idea that you're saying, how are you feeling? Uh, this is how I'm feeling. And that you engage in something that's about emotion and you ground in emotion because emotions are real and emotions, they drive our decisions, they drive our actions, they drive our behavior, the way we treat each other. And so I just wanted to mention that I think that that's something that, you know, through this book that we can we can shout from the rooftops is there's a lot of feeling in this book, right? It has so much feeling and how can we communicate with each other and ask about what those feelings are? Absolutely, thank you. Thank you for reminding us about that. And I won't, Tarius, um, Jessica and Hannah, I know your parents are watching, so I won't make you get in on the parent piece. Um, and just <laughs> thank your parents. Thank your parents for doing an incredible job. Um, so I wanna, on the topic of self-care and, um, and Guy, you talk a lot about this and, and I feel like I am 36 and I learned how to be unapologetic about self-care a little bit too late, but better late than never. Um, and especially self-care, especially during difficult and, and um, hard times. So we have an incredible question about self-care. So Noah to the moon says, I'm starting my transition to become a female and congratulations, that's my edit, that's amazing. And I'm finding it hard to be kind to myself. What are some ways you approach self-care even when you're down? Anyone who wants to speak to that would love to hear. Well, I mean, go ahead, Jessica. Sorry. <laughs> I would say that I would just go with my gut instincts. So for me, a lot of it is to escape into art and looking at different artworks, reading literature, a lot of different places that can transport me. Sorry about that. That can transport me to other places is really honestly. It's okay, Jessica. Keep going. <laughs> is really transformational and helpful towards just making me feel better about a world that's unknown to myself, but I can learn more about. You know, I think you, you brought this up earlier. You have a knack for this, Jessica. You talk a lot about doing things, skills. I think that that's self-care too. Like the fact that yoga is such a huge part of who you are and such a huge meditation and practice for you. I really believe, you know, Noah, if you're listening, you know, making sure that you build your day out in a way where you are, you're, you're stringing together a, a list of skills for yourself that you can complete, that you can reward yourself for. And they can be small things like getting up, taking a shower, brushing your hair, uh, going for a walk, uh, taking care of uh, your dog if you have one or playing with your dog. Yes, like you said, reading literature, escaping into art. These are these skills that you can put one after the other. They, they then lay the groundwork for behavior that lifts us up. It keeps that energy in the body going. And we have a lot of information that tells us that skills-based behavior is super, super positive for your mental health. So I encourage you to like, staying busy is not the right way of saying it because I think it's good to be slow and I think it's good to take things in and think about how you feel. And also it's good to make sure that you reward yourself for every single thing that you do because you're brave every day just for taking a breath, but you're braver when you try a little harder. And that 
that is that's where the juice is at and i'm, I'm so proud of you no and i'm wishing you a lot of happiness and, and love during your transition great we have so many more questions that we can't get to but the born this way foundation team will absolutely answer each and every one of them and we are so grateful for your um your conversation as you can see we've gone later than expected but i think it matters because this book is important the voices of these young people is important um so we'll th first thank you for that that interactive conversation and cynthia we'll start closing Yes, we would like to thank you all so much uh, for this important conversation and the very powerful calls to action. You know, um, before we wrap up this evening, I'd like to say thank you to Hannah, to Terrius, and to Jessica and the rest of our youth authors uh, for bravely sharing their stories. And I want you to know that we celebrate you and today, your life, your stories of your life are best-selling stories. And I will say that, you know, awards are meaningful and, and, and receiving recognition like that is meaningful. But I, I will tell you just from being on this call with you that the meaning to me is truly in this conversation that you shared with me. And I'm going to take this with me forever. But you also get to know that you're a best-selling author. <laughs> This book, y'all, it affirms what we already know to be true, something that you prove out every day. Young people and their stories and their kindness are changing the world. And I am so proud of each of you, first and foremost, the authors with us tonight, but everyone watching at home. And to our audience and readers, thank you all so much for being here with us this evening to celebrate these young people and the transformative power of kindness through storytelling. Being vulnerable is super difficult and sharing your personal stories can be very difficult because you share that piece of yourself with others and it takes so much bravery. And each time we do it though, we give permission for someone else to do the same. So thank you for doing that and giving and giving other people that, 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 that inspiration that they can do it too. And when you start that chain reaction, that gets us one step closer to making kindness cool, to validating the emotions of young people around the world, to eliminating the stigma around mental health, and to building that kinder and braver world. And while we face so many challenges in the world, I hope this book will remind you that we can create a better tomorrow. I hope you feel empowered to share your own story and inspired to create lasting change, one act of kindness at a time. I want to include um, our authors in the final word uh, and invite Jessica, Terrius, and Hannah to share with us how how are you? you you've, you've answered this in some ways, but th there's been a lot of a variety of answers. Maybe you could pick one thing. Uh, how are you finding joy right now and taking care of yourself during such turbulent times, emotional times, important times, historical times? What is keeping you grounded? How are you, how are you taking care of your head? I always, I always say to people, uh, how's your head? How are you feeling? Why don't we start with you, Jessica? So to take care of myself, I think that I have just created a routine where I remind myself that each day is a new fresh start. And I like to look for new avenues to discover new things, take new adventures on, and honestly wash my hands every day and go outside with a mask. So <laughs> yes. it's been a journey. We're all learning and we're in it together. And I think that's what's important. The faster and harder we work as a community together to get through this episode, the sooner we'll be over it. Hannah? Thank you. Uh, yes. So I have a sign in my bedroom that's, uh, that is still to my heart. It says, being myself is enough. I read it every morning. I recommend you to tell yourself a kind thought each day. 
it's important. It's very crucial that you be kind to yourself and be kind to the parents that you have, if you have parents, and to your family. Um, and one of my biggest families is God. God is the creator of all things. He created every single one of us to be kind, sincere, honest, and just explore the joy for what's worth because it means the world and the universe. So hopefully you can take this message and take it into your stories and in your own heart and in your own minds. So please follow the mental health guidance and you got this, everybody. And Terius, how about you? Uh, for me, something that I have gained a new skill in or come in contact with recently uh, during, during COVID-19 is uh, the power of manifestation. Manifesting the, the vibes and the goodness and the, the kindness around you, it's so powerful. Recognizing that you are in control of your life and that you can make the changes that you want to see. Putting that positive energy, putting that kindness into the universe ensures that it will return to you. For me, I am able to do that through my poetry, for, not my, through my poetry and my mindset. I write a lot of poetry that helps me understand where I am, who I am, and the place and space in which I live within. And for me, that's really important because it, it's that moment of reflection that then helps me understand what I'm feeling, why I'm feeling it, and then how can I live within, through, and all, all in the actual emotions and work through that. And so doing the same, finding something to help you be able to reflect and actually engage with your feelings and emotions that you're feeling, because every single one of your emotions are valid. They're valid because you're feeling them, not because someone told you because you're feeling them. And this time, especially with these trying times, you probably are feeling a lot of emotions and separating them and recognizing what they are and being able to understand and feel them, that will help you guide yourself into a better mental state and reminding yourself, more importantly, that you are loved and that you should love yourself. And when you can't find love within yourself, just look around you, around you and find the people who can show you that love that you may not be able to see all the time, but that definitely exists around you and within you. That is so super wise. That's so super wise. It, it, it's valid because you're feeling it, right? I mean, this, this, I, you couldn't have said it better. You all said it so beautifully. Stay brave. You're so brave. Keep channeling kindness. And I just want to tell you all, I love you. I truly mean that. I know that we don't know each other super deeply, but I feel like I got to know you a little bit better on this call. I want to continue to cultivate this relationship with you as I do with all the authors of this book and continue to have a real authentic conversation about mental health. It, it's 2020. It's an important time for us to listen to each other, to learn, to unlearn, to take care of ourselves, to take care of those around us and talk about the things that are hard and be willing to, to be willing to do hard things. I, I love you and I wish you all a beautiful night. And thank you so much to everybody who was watching. A round of applause for our authors and for Channel Kindness. Thank you, Maya. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, everybody. I love you. Love you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night.